You said you were on the way home from Folk City. You, uh, oh no, that came was up with that one. Blood and Roses was um, behind the wall. Behind the wall was. Um, I had go I had been flown up to Boston to remix an album for a group called the Prime Movers Garage Band. Some friends of mine. And um, on the flight on the way back on the shuttle from Boston to New York, the whole song hit me. Uh, Behind the Wall Street just took took me over, melody-wise, lyric-wise. I scribbled it on a napkin. The whole song was written in about three minutes. But the real obstacle was to keep the song in my head. You didn't have a recorder? No, there, there was no tape recorder, no way to keep it there. So uh, I just had to build this wall, this brick wall around my mind. But, uh, okay, bl uh, Blood and Roses, how'd that come about? Blood and Roses came, came about by listening to the sound of my footsteps on the wet street at about 4 a.m. in the morning coming home from Folk City. So that song took place. I got a bass line in my head that matched the rhythm of my walk. And, um, I mean, do you want to know everything about it? No, no, that's, that's, that's perfect. That's great. Green Thoughts. How about Green Thoughts? That, the new album was, was such was written so quickly and it's such a blur that I can't remember. I'm trying to remember that specific song. I can't I can't even remember writing the album. Things How about that are like uh, everybody's guilty pleasure, they'll really like it and everything and they'll say, you know, but they feel guilty about it somehow because it's good pop stuff, you know. Well, um number one, the image of the band is just a very direct, straight ahead, accessible image. We don't have hair that's three feet tall, or we don't dress in leather head to toe. I mean, it's not a calculated thing that's designed to provoke interest from a certain segment of the audience. It's just real music for real people. Um, it's not a thrash, dissonant, minor key sort of, um, whatever, Bauhaus sort of band or something, which again is part of a scene that seems to be more style over substance to me than anything. I I don't know, you know. I I mean, ba basically, we make the records for ourselves. We always had to because there was never an audience for us in the early days. I mean, if we didn't believe in what we were doing musically, there would have been no point carrying on. So the songs were always written and perform for us, and if we love them, we, we we always thought that there might be room for other people to love them too. I don't, I don't, I don't know if we are anybody's guilty pleasures. I mean, that's an interesting observation because I wasn't aware of it. You know, I know we've never been an entirely fashionable sort of band, but that's the way it goes, I guess. You know, it's a, I mean, you know, the following, and I always felt that. There were a lot of bands on the scene, contemporary of ours, who were much less our equal musically, who got a lot more recognition, and some who got record deals, um, perhaps because of the image or a certain trendiness in sound that was in vogue at the time, you know. But here you are, you've got hooks by from old something one way or another. So that's what I try to do. I think. Um, lyrically, I think I've gotten a little better. I get better all the time. I don't consider myself a great lyricist, but I'm perhaps better than some people out there who think that they can write lyrics, and not as good as a great many. But um, lyrics are important. I don't think I've ever made any false moves in terms of lyrics. You know, they're always sort of on the money. Um, you know, I don't know. It's hard for me to comment objectively about my songwriting. I don't even know if I'm respected as a songwriter.